make sense. I don't know if that made sense. I apologize if that makes sense. I, I can't make it any clearer than that. So, if it is, it's not easy to, to, to discuss this, right? If it is, then so long, and I'll actually draw this up because the image just popped in my head. If it is, then so long as it is, it must always be some part, it must always be some one part. It cannot be, no, not one part. And basically all that's saying is, imagine that, I can erase, yeah, I can erase this stuff now. Imagine, it's not an easy lecture. Um, imagine that we have um, da -da 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 -bum -bum -bum, things in the world. The totality of things in the world are these four things. And the, the first principle is this. And we, let's make it bigger to be, exaggerate. So that's the first principle. Then there has to be a sense that everything in the world has in it varying degrees of that stuff. So a piece of this broke off and went here, and a piece of this broke off and went here, and a piece of this broke off and went here, a piece of it broke off and went here, and a piece of it broke off and went here, and a piece of it broke off and went here, and on and on and on. So that the totality of things that exist in the world contain the stuff from the first principle, right? So if it were the case, do I have a different color? Uh, I don't think I have a different color. Bastards. So, I don't have a different color. Damn, that sucks. Yeah, I don't have a different color. Well, that's... I don't know what that is. Alright, so anyway, so I, I could have sworn I brought the red. One second. Right. I thought I brought a different color. Nope. Okay, whatever. What am I do? So, um, imagine that I have a different color. Imagine that there's something in the world that exists and this is red. There's no red on the board. The question is, where, did this, where the hell did this come from? Where did the red come from? Where's the stuff that caused the red? Remember, we, this, it's, it's, it's a causal chain, right? This is what is important. In talking about first principles and talking about uncaused cause, the existence of something necessitates it as either being caused by the effect of or the uncaused cause of. You only got three options, right? You're either caused by something else, you've affected something else, or you're the thing that started it all. How could this be in an existence, red, if I had a red X, I put a red X there, if the first principle is blue? That's sort of the idea. It's super ghetto, but hopefully that makes sense, right? So, again, again, among all, again, among all these parts, there cannot be any which is part of being, there cannot be any which is part of existence, and yet not one part, not part of this initial principle cause. Consequently, uh, consequently, unity, the one, must belong to every part of being and be lacking in none, small or great. Consequently, unity, oneness, must belong to every part of being, little b, little b, little b, little b, little b, little b, big b, right? Um, unity must belong to, what does it say? Consequently, unity must belong to every part of being and be lacking in none. It's lacking here. Here, we need this, right? So, we can't talk about unity if we don't have a little x, right? So it has to have that little blue x. Otherwise, we can't talk about this thing existing because the question is, where did that red stuff come from? There is no place for red stuff. That's really, really general, but hopefully that will get your mind around this very, very complex, super dense, cryptic, ancient Greek text, right? So, consequently, unity must belong to every part of being and be lacking in none, small or great. This is the unification of this opposition, right? So that which is outside becomes inside. The external becomes internal. The, the, the we becomes I. So you have this sort of, you know, when philosophers, um, yesterday was what, 420? So, you know, if philosophers are notoriously, this is just a generalization, philosophers are no, uh, notoriously um, known for partaking in um, um, April 20th festivities. And this is the conversation you, you might see yourself having, right? Oh, yeah, man, it's like, it's like the I that is we and the, and the you that is me, like the man that is a woman, like the, like the living that is dead, right? Well, we see that the living that is dead is sort of true, right? The, the, right? That's the beings towards that. that there's some grounding in that. Um, I have, and I gave us a, 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 a reference um, to uh, a book that I 
I wrote not a plug because you can get it for free. I want you to have it for free. Uh, and I give the link down in um, footnote 47, Daughters of the Surrogate Mother. Um, before um, I published it, at, like I think I published it the year I got my master's degree. But I had been reading a lot of these texts, I had been doing a lot of research, I had an idea that I was going to start um, um, my, my dissertation work on evil, started getting introduced to occult ideas, and um, I specifically incorporated this Parmenian idea in, in my sort of fictional narrative, and I created a character called Ovenin, who is a one person, one physical being, but is both male and female, right, so that it's, it's, it's clearly, it's a man and a woman, biologically, gestation and penis and erections and vagina and all that in one body, right, because of this idea, and I gave the footnote, um, page 139 of the, the, the fantasy that I wrote, just as a reference to show you that, you know, this isn't something that I just started doing, right? I've, I've, been, I've been researching and writing on this stuff both academically and creatively f for a while, for a while. So for those of you who want to read further into that narrative, uh, knock yourself out. Okay, so we understand what they all believe in. And this was part of the one, right? So they all believe in this one. So we recognize that left hand occultist, right hand occultist, um, those who choose the left hand path, those who choose the right-hand path, remember left-hand path is the bad path, arguably. Right-hand path is the good path, arguably. But I just spent probably 40 minutes discussing how they are, they share all of those things in common. Despite the fact that they're so different, and they participate in the act, and they function, especially in the society, in completely different senses, all of those conditions they, they both ascribe to, right? So that there's a, a huge similarity Many at, at many points where the left-hand path and the right-hand path, and obviously I'm, I'm, I told you from the beginning that I'm going to present this lecture as if, and I do believe there are paths to the occult left and right. Um, assuming that that is true, then here are all the things that they share in common. Now, what I'm going to do is talk about characteristics that are uniquely and distinctly left-handed, right-handed, right? Concepts that are uniquely, exclusively left-hand path concepts concepts that are uniquely, exclusively right-hand path concepts, so you have the full, the full understanding. Those things that um, only one member ascribes to, those things that the other member exclusively ascribes to, and those things that they both agree on. Right, so again, objective. Okay. Uh, okay, okay. So this is uh, page 26, occultist beliefs, right-hand path only, right? When we talk about the right-hand path, When we talk about the occult of the right-hand path, abbreviated RHP, the truth is that um, academics and, well, not just academics, practitioners, right? I, I mean, I am an academic. I don't, I don't, I read and study, again, as I said, I read and study um, and, and investigate the concepts of occultism, but I don't consider myself an occultist. Um, but those who actually practice daily um, occult the occult. Um, they don't consider, and academics don't really use the word right-hand path. Left-hand path is definitely used. Um, typically what's used is white light, right? So, white, right? So, um, right-hand path, RHP, white light, all the same thing, right? So if you're talking about the good guys, generally, right? So if you're talking about the good guys, and obviously I'm being general here, because they're really, well, anyway, we'll get to the quote-unquote good guys, bad guys stuff later. Right now, what average Joe, you don't have any idea about the occult. This is the first time you're hearing about it. But the, the, the people who wear white, it's always right. The, the people who are good wear white, and the bad guys are on black, right? They, they come dressed in black, uh, like on the old Tarzan and John Wayne flicks, right? Um, I'm being facetious. So the, the white light practitioners, um, the RHP, the right-hand path, Knowledge has been lost. Remember, we said this. So I'm borrowing this from the thing that they both share. So, like the left-handed path practitioners, they believe that knowledge first bullet point. Knowledge has been lost as a byproduct of human skepticism, uh, scientific skepticism, and human evolution. So we begin that knowledge has been lost, as we said before. Knowledge has been lost. Remember, both agree with that claim. Now we're going to see what they do 
as a consequence of that claim, which is, this is where the separation